idea that the black people in the black manifesto are calling for reparation for damage that has been done over the centuries in America uh, and that there are many similarities. However, state of Israel or the Jewish community throughout the world. And it was relatively easy in making an appropriation of reparations funds to funnel it into a place where it would be used by the established, organized uh, Jewish leadership. Uh, the question I raise, therefore, is how do those who are asked to respond with reparations uh, in the Black Manifesto, how do they determine uh, the entitlement of uh, the BEDC, or, or of any uh, black group, uh, how do they determine that they're entitled to receive the funds and that the funds that is given to, are given to them will go to the place where it belongs, namely to the uh, total uh, black people of America? Well, I think the answer to that is, is, has been clearly demonstrated by the way in which uh, those already, but before I start, let me affirm your point. I think your point's well made, and I think this is one of the, one of the tricks of integration is that black people have not met their responsibility in putting forth re official representation of their group. In fact, the whole integration process tended to make black people think they didn't need to organize as a group and not have representations. And I, and I, th I stand where you stand. I think it is the responsibility of the black community to put forth uh, 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 official representations. But I think in response to the manifesto, this has been happening. I think that we've seen that all of the legitimate church groups, the National Council of Black Churchmen, uh, the black Methodists, uh, the black caucus in the Episcopal Church, all the black caucuses have backed the manifesto. Now, since the manifesto group is not a government agency, which, which you know, makes you parallel a little where it doesn't fit quite exactly, uh, obviously, as far as the black church is concerned, that we're all prepared to recognize the Black Economic Development Conference as the legitimate organ to receive these funds. And I think since the uses of this money is going to be so public and since its accountability is going to be so easy, that there's no problem, you know, because all of this has got to be accounted for and its, uh, its goals are obviously for the benefit of black people. I think the parallel breaks down because we're not talking about governments, uh, but your point is still, I think, a good point. Phil, how do you think the average uh, a Catholic feels about uh, this bed scene, about the whole black rep reparations uh, thing? I don't know any average Catholic. <coughs> a lot of Catholics. <laughs> But it's, it seems uh, strange, though, when you look at the reaction of the general public to the whole movement here, uh, that one wonders why there isn't a more of a positive response from listening to the discussion of both the last segment and also the beginning of this one, that if it is so very clear that this is a justified movement, that it is so very clear that uh, this ought to be, then how can we account for the fact that the response to it has not been a very good one? I mean, it's obvious that it has not been a very good one, has it, across the country. So what is involved? What's, what is happening? What are people thinking? Thinking. I think it's a very important uh, issue for us to uh, listen to what the people are saying about this. What is in their mind? How do they relate it to their own experience? How do they put it into the, into the, uh, the gel of, uh, of their own uh, attempts to... Uh, Self, for self-determination, et cetera. So I think that the, this is part of it, and that's why in that last segment, I, when I mentioned that uh, when we're involved ever in attempting uh, any kind of a moral persuasion uh, on something that is right and good, that we have to begin with where the people are to find out what is in their mind as we attempt to uh, open up all of us to see what is right and what ought to be done. So I think that, uh, and I've listened often and read a fair amount about the difference between rhetoric and the substance, that uh, somewhere at the heart of, uh, of the movement there is a, the substance, and it seems to me that the substance is this question of self-determination. People, people have a right for self-determination, which certainly we all agree with. Certainly the Catholic community agrees with it. It's going to all sorts of pain and effort to achieve self-determination on its own. That's one large substantive item I, I would say. The other is the question of money to achieve that, because we know even though money may be the source of evil, it is also necessary to do what, what is good schools and homes and, and uh, employment all involve money in some way. So money and self-determination. Who can uh, disagree with that? But then there is the overtone here now of, of a notion of reparation. 
And this is where it affects people's thinking and, and, and their own background, their own experience. It is difficult for a people, and I'm, like you mentioned the average Catholic, I, I think I can speak a little bit about the Catholic uh, background, uh, who feel that they themselves have uh, attempted a similar type of movement in America, in American society, with, a, with some who, who knows how to compare the various levels of discrimination, but with some obstacles. And the money uh, part of it was done by a great deal of voluntary contribution. The present time, the effort is being made to have society share with the Catholic community some of the, the general funds for what it has done over the years to assist in the education of children in America. And we feel very strongly this is a positive thing. Some connotation of reparation might be introduced there, but we have not done that. The other thing is self-determination. Yes, we believe very strongly in self-determination. There should be schools. There should be uh, ways and means for the black people of America to achieve uh, uh, the self-determination and all that implies. But who must share the sense of guilt for what American history has produced? How are you going to today convince in a real way people that they do share this guilt? People who themselves feel that their own experience right. has been part of the, of the whole process. How do you do it? How do you, go, how do you speak to a group of people who are primarily immigrant people? How would you do it if you, if you had to uh, make the effort? They feel that the... Uh, Which group are you saying is primarily an immigrant people? The Roman? I'm talking generally about Roman Catholic people well, and there large numbers of, of Italian, Irish, uh, uh, Polish, there German. Uh, there were an awful lot of, of Roman Catholic immigrants who immigrated with 12 black slaves. That was what mm -hmm. Bishop Lucasus uh, called yeah. for when, when, when he encouraged the Vatican to sanction African slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of the latter Catholics came in the latter, latter years, but there were an awful yeah. lot of Catholics and on the ground floor yeah. of the building of this, of this Western Hemisphere. Yeah, well, Father Woodward, uh, this history uh, part of it, uh, I'd like to know an awful lot more about it, but uh, there are facts of history and there are general sweeps of history. The That's general exactly. sweep of Catholic history in America is that we had large groups of immigrant people who came here in the largest numbers, certainly long after slavery had become a pattern in America. Yeah, but, there, <laughs> but very proximately after there had been famine, famines in Ireland, for example, and famines which were induced almost by people in, in authority and in, the, uh, in control who took the food from the people and sold it for their own economic gain, and these people were subjected to that. They came here to flee from that. Uh, no, you know, no, I don't think there's any denial of the fact that, that in certain segments of America, Roman Catholics have been discriminated against uh, you know, because of their religion. But on the whole, they haven't moved... And, into, and also their nationalities. Yeah. Well, they, well, even at that, though, the point I'm making is they didn't move into the mainstream, so to speak, of American life because they were or were not Catholics. They moved into the mainstream because they were Caucasian. And the issue mm -hmm. we're talking about is not a Roman Catholic over against a Protestant or a Jewish issue. It's a racial issue. We're talking about Caucasian groups as opposed to, to Negroid or European groups as opposed to African groups. And I think that, that there's, you know, the, the point is, despite the problems that, that white immigrant groups went through, there was never any, any, any legal legislation of the nature that was used against Africans. There was never any tradition or moray. Yeah. The, you know, and there's no comparison. No, I agree with all, I agree with and, all that you're saying, but, but how do you point. convince the people one, such as this that they are guilty of point. something? One more point. You know, and I, I don't want to introduce, as some of you probably know, one of my fields is African and Afro-American history. So the things I say come from strong documentation. Uh, and I'm aware of the immigrant patterns. I'm not just talking about them. I know when the waves came. I know where the waves were affected. And in general, it's safe to say that the immigrants who were encouraged to come from Europe were encouraged to come at the exclusion of African rural, of, of Afro-American rural, rural dwellers in the South who were excluded from business, wow. even when they immigrated to well, the North. Well, you can't blame that on the immigrant people. They no. came under regulations <laughs> but that I can, been established I can, here prior to their arrival. Well, excuse well, me, Phil, they're, excuse they're, me, Monsignor. I'm not finished. And the point I'm trying to make is but that the industry they walked into... Where we both, you know, say a thing... Well, I'm trying to finish my point. Fine. Wonderful. The industry they walked into yes. was built as a result of the industry in America. In other words, they got a job. It's just like a person who, who, who is a fence takes stolen goods from the stealers, that makes him an accomplice. That's the point. By, by, by being a part of a system that was built on slavery... Well, what what, what sort of a sense of guilt would a, would a poor Irish uh, <coughs> laborer have who come over, comes over here and works his head off laying tie on a railroad? Huh? Is he responsible for what some gigantic corporation did in regard to the railroads? He's a slave himself. Well, okay. well neither is the person who buys the stolen commodity and the cops come and arrest him for it. And he didn't know it was stolen. But see, today, stolen. you seem to be saying <coughs> to people generally that you are guilty for all these past... Well, uh, but Phil, Phil, Phil isn't it clear that, wouldn't we all agree, that today the Roman Catholic Church, Protestant churches, and Jewish synagogues are rich, you know, over hun the hundreds of billions <laughs> no, of dollars. Well, all I know about our problems with our school system, we're not very rich. We're well, yeah, but we've got, we've got billions of dollars in property and investment 
investments and income. Right, now, we let me just separate out a little bit because we're in trouble. All right, we need, what, we need money for our self-determination too. All right, but the point I'm trying to make is we are. But we rich. shouldn't have the poor people contending with one another for that money that's available. Right. I hate to be contending with you people for what is available well, because I feel the, we both have the, the right to. The issue is though, we are rich. We have billions of dollars, uh, and we all have benefited e economically and politically from the subjugation in times past and discrimination in times present of the black people in this yeah. country. And, and while I, I have sympathy well, uh, for what yeah. you say about, about the Roman Catholic, I don't think you would feel, yeah. or nor would I, uh, that, that this is on a scale in American history well, with to, what's been done to, to the blacks. I really agree with that last part, that it is on the basis of what we are experiencing today, that if we are involved in we are involved in discriminatory patterns today. That is where we should feel guilty. Well, well, what about, about the reparations we should ask? Beyond, Not something in the past. Well, I think it goes beyond that because Catholics or any white group uh, could not be That's where right. they are today. That's they they right. couldn't enjoy the things they enjoy yeah. had it not been right. for the particular structures of racism that have oriented our society in the way it's been. So that, you know, I don't know, well, you, I don't know guilt. who you talk it's about guilt. guilt in this way. I didn't, raise, I didn't raise guilt. The but no, notion of reparation raised the issue of guilt. Yeah, but the, the fact of the matter, the the fact of the matter the Catholic is... Church has said that really the question of guilt is a very, very hazy thing. Unless the person himself has chosen with full recognition of the situation, I deliberately choose to do this evil thing against that person. It's hard to yeah, but see, I could, but see the fact argue. of the matter is that, that we do choose to do this evil thing against that person. Because where we are today and where black people are today are intimately related, and this is as true for, for white, uh, right. predominantly Catholic yeah. immigrant groups, perhaps more true than, than other groups. I so think, therefore, I think the there's, poor a, there's are a direct more intimately tie. Related. The no, there's a direct people. tie yeah. between what we have and what black people do not have, right. and we are responsible for what they do not have. And I think what you're doing, and I think perhaps this is where we're, we're you know, not to get into a semantic game, but I think that there's a difference between blame and, 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 and responsibility. Right. You know, I think because you're, because if you're drunk right. and driving right. down the street yes. and you kill somebody, That's you're responsible true. Right. whether you intended to or not. And, yep. and you may not be guilty in the sense that it was your fault, other than the fact it was your fault you took the drink. I think that, <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> I think it's dangerous, excuse me, for the white community to all of a sudden say, you know, uh, that, that these things have been happening. Because this raises serious questions. That what, didn't they see the treatment of black people all these years? Haven't they been watching it all the while? You know, and, and, and you have to ask, sure, you can, you can become unconscious to things, but you're responsible for becoming unconscious. And I think well, all psychologists agree on that. I think that's really that. something I, different I, I, than I that, for that the point is a very important that. point that I was hoping would be, would be developed uh, to its full. I, I think that it, it's put on the wrong plane in, when it's put in terms of guilt. Because while there are undoubtedly those who should feel guilt, there are many who are able to feel that they are not guilty. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to responsibility, one of the things that, that uh, Jews are very mindful of is that there are millions of Germans living today who lived during the Nazi era and say, I had nothing to do with it. Right. And they feel that that is a complete dis disclaimer of responsibility. Yeah. But to, to the Jewish people, that's not an acceptable disclaimer. The fact that it was going on while they were there and that they did nothing about it makes them responsible. Yes, yeah. That's the present. That's out of the and, present. And is, isn't it's that today, true about the ghetto thing. today? Thing. Yes, to, but it's today. Aspect, you know, there's an aspect of all of that. I think that it's really dangerous, dangerous to, you know, to try to avoid. <laughs> is that as in the case with the Jews making reparations demands upon Germany, Jews were not, uh, you know, the demand was not that, you know, some given German farmer, you know, who uh, had next to nothing, give up part of what he had to be about the business of paying restitution. You know, it was not that. It was the relationship of one group to another. It was a group and institutional question. And that the case uh, with the church, and, you know, yeah. looking at the Catholic yeah. Church, that it's, it begs the question to yeah. say, to raise whether or not the question whether or not some uh, poor Irish immigrant yeah. has a reparations debt. What we're talking about is an institutional relationship. Yeah. Well, well, okay, let's talk about the institutional relationship. Where, where do you feel the funds that the Catholic Church get come from? They come from the, the, this, the, these, these people. An Voluntary awful lot came contribution. from the colonial domination of, of Latin American countries. That's where an awful lot of the funds of the Roman Catholic Church came from. And from owning, from owning actual plantations, <laughs> owning actual, actual setups where slaves worked, that's yeah. how the Roman Catholic Church got a lot of its funds in, in the America? 16th, 17th, and 18th American century. Roman Catholic it's one church. church, isn't it? I mean, in America, North America. Uh, in, in the Western Hemisphere, in the South America and North America. Oh, South America. I don't yeah. know an awful lot about South America. Well, you, the church is there. But well, I mean, we're talking about the North America situation where most Roman Catholics are immigrant people the, on the Eastern do you Coast. Do you look at the United States' Roman Catholic Church as separate from the Roman Catholic Church? The funds yeah, that are, are controlled by the Vatican? There are certain different. Of course there are. And that's the thing about the institutional church. The, the funds come from the people. 
They come from the voluntary contributions yeah. of the and people. They came from the involuntary contributions of black workers. That's what we're saying. And the you thing know. is, see that I mean, it's really not fair. And the thing that you know we can't we can't permit ourselves to you know, to, to to let slide by. As a matter of fact, that in the case of the Catholic Church, the mm -hmm. Catholic Church. Uh, does not exist by and large at this stage of the game on the basis of donations right. from the people in mass. You know, so I, have, I could talk I, about I, Chicago's I like slum property, property owned by the Roman Catholic, Catholic Church. Church. No, I know. No, not when you, you speak as if you have that gigantic information and knowledge about the Catholic Church. I mean, I, I live in the Catholic Church, and I do know that the Catholic Church survives on the voluntary contributions of its people. What about the land holdings? You know, all I'm saying is that I would, appreciate, I would appreciate you allowing me you know, to finish what I'm yeah. saying. It's, that's just good. Uh, you know, a basic kind of courtesy. Yeah, I know. There, you know, there are a couple of things. One is that the, you know, the Catholic Church, you know, is in this country, in North America, not right. just in South right. America. The Catholic Church, you know, uh, does own tremendous amounts of property. Sure. The, uh, you know, the church does have, uh, you know, multi, multi-million dollar investments. Do you think that, uh, can I intervene, intervene because you're sure. talking about my church, see? Right. And then you're talking about as if you know everything about it. Oh, no, I'm not. Now, now we're involved right now with a school system and that is in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't have money. Now, do you really believe that the Catholic Church is so wealthy that it's holding back money and letting the school system go down the drain and not use all this no, gigantic it's, amount it's of money for it? It's just kind of silly. No, I think the point is, <laughs> Father, I think, you know, I, I, you know, if we want to get into this, we can. You said this before, and it went by, and I, I let it go by because I don't agree. I don't see the parochial system as a sub school subsidizing public education. I see it as a very exclusive movement to propagate certain ideas. Now, How we could debate that. determination But uh, the, well, let, let me What's make my point. What's the difference between self-determination and the parochial school that system? That given your present budget, is, is apparently that's the only way to talk to you is to just keep talking. That's uh, right. You know, in, 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 in apparently, uh, in the present budget, you're having trouble. Sure, because that's, a, that's what we're raising. What the manifesto is raising is the question of priorities. Right. Right. question of, you know, what are the priorities? Given your present priorities, which are racist, sure you're running out of money. Well, but if you were to talk about a different priority, perhaps it would be a different situation. Oh, can I and say if you can defend can the I fact that the Roman Catholic Church is not racist, can then we can have now? a real good argument. Can I know? say something now? Because I say my own church is racist too. Can I say you something know? now? Right. What's the difference between your notion of self determination and running a parochial school system? The point is that the, the church has a responsibility to the society in which it finds itself. I personally think <coughs> that parochial education ducks that responsibility. This is a personal opinion, and I said we could debate it. It wasn't the point I was making. The point I'm making oh, is... I just want to ask the question. Phil, let I'm me simply make saying it. there's another side to that argument. Yeah. It, you know, it isn't as, 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 as clean as you made it sound. There's a, there's a side that could... could and the question is side of it all is that so often the, the poor people wind up in conflict with one another when the real people who are able yeah. to control and make the decisions are not affected by it. So the thing re reduces itself to the, the poor inner city people, uh, white and black, they wind up at each other's uh, throats, and they are the people who are being subjugated by, uh, by the whole thing of priorities, of the budgets, etc. Right. Why isn't there uh, uh, enough homes for people to move into? Do you think the poor people who live in the city aren't, are, can control that? Why aren't there enough schools? Do you think the poor people in the city can control that? What, what, well, what no one has addressed the, 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 the manifesto. Because the you manifesto talk about is not addressed to, to poor, poor people. people. It's, it's addressed to the city. That's you don't understand the institution of the Catholic Church. The manifesto Church. is addressed because it's people. to church institutions, and it addresses itself to the question of the institutional wealth of, of those Yeah, Mr. Kenyatta, did you churches. read the paper last week about the, the Catholic social services, the Catholic charities appeal? That is I'm, the I'm institutional not, church. I'm not gain saying that, Phil. What you're going to have to do, That gains from from what you're voluntary going to have to do, contributions. What, it may be hard is what you're going to have to do is to, you know, uh, as a start, to try to suspend your judgment, to try, you know, I would, you know, and and, and least let ideas get across. I mean, I think one of the problems well, that's has why been. I listened for the an over, previous hour to you know, all the an ideas. overreaction, you know, um, no. just on the surface. Well, now, well, now, when you listen to what I'm trying to say, then just one thing. A specific uh, example the is a case. Catholic social services. <laughs> runs on voluntary contributions of its people. If, you, if you're able to see that, then you have listened to me, and I'll be very right. happy. I, I, I hear that, you know, I think that's Fine. good that okay. people should be about that kind of work. I'm not gainsaying that. But there are specific cases, you know, just to cite a case, um, there's a, a, a school, a Catholic school in, in Delaware County, in Chester, St. Anthony School, which, you know, has been um, an all-white parish, which has become, began as an Italian national parish. There's documentation you know, that the parish was eventually integrated, i.e., uh, non-Italian Catholics, you know, um, were brought in to, to make out the school population, and eventually even Protestant whites. But the, the overriding fact there is that uh, there's a school in the middle of the black community for, you know, 
uh, and, and the one admissions criteria that will not be dropped is, you know, the whiteness. Yeah. Okay, well, now that, no, that's again, a matter of fact. Now, what happens is, what happens is, what happens is that in that, that case, that no, there is a policy is that case, out of our school is. system that there's no Protestant well, you white give him children. An when he finishes? No, because I won't get a chance. See? There'll be too many things along the well, line. I, I, think a, for, no, 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 I think it's a case happens, where we can, you know, interrupt, case. we can interrupt one another, and I'll stop. And when they, Why don't you continue there for a moment, a, and then, uh, and then yeah. we'll all agree that uh, Phil Dowling gets a chance sure. to reply. Now, you know, what happens in that case, and I'm, you know, just talk, talking now from uh, the results of, you know, discussion with the priest of that particular church, one of the things that he, you know, that he pointed out is that uh, indeed his church is faced with pressing problems, you know, and that, that he, uh, he cannot be about, you know, he does not have, uh, you know, the, the wherewithal to be about, you know, making the kind of response that he maybe should be making to the black community and what have you. And that there is a case, you know, where there is some, maybe some sense of pitting poor white against poor black. Oh, but yeah. we see, we see, you know, that at the back of that is in fact that you know that um, that tremendous institution, the church, and that the, it's interesting to me, you know, and confusing to me, that you would attempt to lay at the feet of the Black Manifesto movement the charge that must be laid at the feet in this case of, of the church, of the Catholic Church in this particular case, the, the charge, you know, that what has happened has been that the institution has deliberately or unconsciously been about the business of trying to set the poor the black, the poor, the white, against one another, while the church has been, you know, recalcitrant in, in fulfilling its own obligations. I don't see the, the uh, consequence of that, of that last part, but the, uh, the part about uh, any sort of a policy, I do know what the policy is in regard to Protestant white people who uh, we love very much, but when it comes to entering our suburban schools precisely for this reason, there is a policy that no uh, non-Catholic enters a, a, a school which has uh, a full capacity. That's what I meant about exclusive. That's what I meant. Yeah, of course, it's a Catholic yeah. school system. Right. But in the inner city, as a service to the community because of the desire of the people, non-Catholic students are taken in. Yeah, and in, this, and in this case, non-Catholic white students. No, 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 I'm Negro, Negro students. Negro students. I'm saying that there is a case. You know, it's three blocks down the street from a house. There's a case where, you know, you have a very blatant and crude and backward kind of racism. Yeah. And rather than being about the business of ministering educationally, to yeah. those people, and, that, and that's spring, you know, that I must hold you personally, yeah. you know, accountable for that, given your You're role. Right. Well, well, I, I, I do recognize that of, you know, in our community, the as in, the, as in those communities people. generally, we have discrimination. We all know that. That's what the, the, it's all well, about. Can I, can I, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. And that is uh, the, the, the original focus of this conversation before we got off on this, and I think it's been very interesting, but the original focus was on your question, I believe, was how do you. Uh, Paul, how do you how do you tell the people in right. your in your faith and right. in all the Christian and Jewish faith uh, what's going on? You know, how right. do you get them to accept right. the manifesto? Uh, what its demands? How you get them to accept the Black Economic Development Conference? How you get them to, uh, you know, from the point they aren't even at the point we are. Most of the people that I talk to are at the point of saying, what do these black bandits want? You know, yeah. who are they to walk into our living room and say, give me money? And we've got a heck of, a, of an educational uh, uh, job to do just to get people to understand yeah. uh, the kind of things that lie behind this, this dialogue. And I, I, I think... Yes, I agree. Uh, That's the pr and, you know, it, what it, what it, the point I was trying <coughs> to make in the original response to that, and I think you, know, you sort of laid a, a basis for it, is that the, and, you know, and a, a consequential question, a subsequent question, a, a commensurate question is, how could it go all this time? You know, and exactly. not be dealt with. You see, and then, then you begin to, to look, for instance, at the, at the nature of American education you know, whether it's parochial or republic, where you find a total distortion of the history of America, to the extent that you can find white Americans believing that black people are lazy and, and shiftless, and that's the reason that we're poor. You know, and if we would just get up and work, everything would be fine. And even pass, by pass off information such as the fact that black people are lazy, you know, and I, I heard Stokely Carmichael say once, which I think is so profound and so simple, how in the hell could we be lazy if we were brought here to do the work of white people? You know, and, uh, you know, and, and this, this is a fact that, that everybody knows, and yet everybody goes on believing that black people are poor and in trouble in America in terms of the economic, you know, being left out and economic uh, uh, impotence because of our own fault. Yeah. You know, and, and of course, you know, this is the key issue, and what, what it really raises is what we were getting at before. You know, how, as Carol was getting at before, how, in the last session, how can one confess and not mean anything by their confession, you know? Not mean that, you know, that I've done anything wrong. Just say the words. Now, this, you know, this this has bothered me. The, 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 the Christian has always said, and in my own church has said it over the years, uh, we love 
our black brother, or we love anyone that's downtrodden, and we're all together, and we're going to help them. But it's in the nature of passing a resolution, or it's in the nature of praying. Mm -hmm. God knows we need a lot of prayer. Yeah. But it's not in the nature of action. The, the, the thought of a Christian, and I'll be immediate here and now for a minute instead of there and then, mm -hmm. walking through the ghetto, the ghettos in Philadelphia, and not saying, I as a Christian cannot let this exist. Right. I, I don't just don't go back to my home and say, boy, you know, I went through the North Philadelphia ghetto and that was hell. I should, they got to go and say, I got to change it. I got to tell Mayor Tate to change it. I got to tell the governor to change it. I got to tell the President of the United States to change it. Because well, let's hear it now. I get now. mad at Kenyatta that's because he doesn't ask for enough. Yeah, 500 million. The President of the United States ought to get up and make a statement like Kennedy did to put a man on the moon and say a national objective. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. within the next 10 years, we will eradicate ghettos. And we'll spend billions on it. And, you know, and then everybody well, says yes or no. Don't you think the present sense of responsibility, not through some uh, mystic type yeah, of... Yeah, but uh, I'm not uh, trying to dodge the, well, the right. I think this is one of the problems, the here one of the problems that uh, you have in trying to communicate the, the, the reasonableness of the demand in the, in the Black Manifesto That's is that, that it, is a, it is our habit of thought, and I think uh, understandably and legitimately, that this is too big a problem to be dealt with as a... As a uh, problem of the churches. The churches have been doing certain things, and granted it's oh. not enough. And It's and too big a problem for us not to deal but, with it. No, but yeah. what I'm saying is that the magnitude of it has to be measured in billions, tens of billions, not in, in hundreds of millions, and that a proposal to raise a half a billion dollars is a pr proposal to scratch the surface. And many of us who've, who've been involved in this for a long time have recognized that, that uh, we must get the government to accept responsibility and we've been we've had a terrible feeling of frustration in recent months because the government seems to be turning its back and walking away instead of moving the direction it should be going well, anyway, well, i was going to identify and of course this is a pattern that we, we have to become very aware of in american society you know and we have to face it for what it is if for instance a personal family came to any of us who do any counseling or something with the same kind of a pattern of behavior which is that you've got a priority problem right in the middle of your family and you keep doing nothing about it. Right. We would call that what it is. That's mental illness. Yeah. You know, that's the inability to deal with reality. And what we're saying here is that 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 that, that everybody, including the churches, keeps fleeing to fantasy, yeah. keeps ducking the issue, keeps talking about other priorities. This is the same pattern of any mentally many little person that you see. So what do you yeah. do? You start yeah. dealing with therapy. You start showing right. people what the consequences of this are. And, when, and, you know, and this yeah. is all that the manifesto does. See, a thing that has happened, in fact, uh, is that the manifesto, you know has called upon churches to join in the struggle for a total reparation, for you know, to, the, the total struggle for black liberation, for redressing imbalance, for setting the scale straight. You know, and I, I think that what's happening here, and in a way it should, the churches should view it as a training ground. Let's get about, this is, you know, this is merely the, the milk and bread. Let's, let's eat this up and get down to the meat of the issue. But I certainly cannot expect a man to be a stable ally in my struggle against this, uh, this monstrous and racist government, and it is, to be a stable ally in a struggle against that government for governmental reparations, if he is quibbling about what uh, we have sat here and that's said is not enough money to scratch the surface. Well, no, I think here, here's a, an issue, though. I think this likening it, uh, this problem of priorities, I think, is a very urgent one. It seems to me that we have a confused voice, though, at this point. Because, for example, one of the very overriding things that's being talked about in the country as a priority is in dealing with the problem of separatism. And I think certainly it's confusing for people to see this, of insisting that there is no such thing as a, a separate but equal education, that there has to be means for assuring integration in housing, in education, well, and in many ways. Means. Now, the point is, uh, I think we have to view this carefully and see if there isn't a problem that arises. Certainly within our own church, my own personal church fellowships, many of the problems that arose over this whole uh, situation was that the majority what? of my members are black. Cook now, Cookman. Cookman not, not at Cookman, but I have a parish of four churches. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the people in the congregation this morning were black. I have a funeral tonight. I'll be probably the only white one there. Uh, here's a situation where they're being asked to make a very substantial contribution you see. Uh, we have interracial marriages within our, our fellowship, within our staff. Uh, this puts people on the line. Uh, certainly here we are moving in two directions at once. Well, 
No, no, I, I, I think that that's, you know, that issue of separatism, right. just for the record, the issue of separatism is a false issue. You have interracial marriages in your church. We have interracial marriages on the steering committee of the Black Economic sure. Development Conference. We are not about the business of any kind of false separatism. And I mean, I think that's really, you know, again, just, you know, skirting the issue. Uh, it's, it seems to me to be precisely, but you're asking, precisely. But you're asking a mixed church you see, to act as a white church. And I'm saying that you're oh, acting if as though the church is all white. You, yeah. And yeah. as though... <laughs> if, we're asking, if your church is black, we're not asking you. Right. You know. We're not addressing ourselves to black churches. Not well, demanding I think there's a, black another, another question that you, you should be answered. Uh, it seems to me that uh, one of the problems of the, of the manifesto is that it's clothed in revolutionary terms and therefore uh, assures rejection by many of the people who you would hope would be responsive to it. Because you can't, you simply, uh, uh, it's customary when you want to get something across and get acceptance to do everything you can to put it in the most acceptable form. Yeah. And this has been put in the least acceptable yeah. form and has really fed all of the law and order and reactionary right. Right. forces who are just looking for sure. good reasons to oppose sure. it. And let me, let me respond to that you know, and be very candid about it. And, I, you're, and, and this is not at you because I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Let's say it first of all this way. When we acted like Dr. King acted, yeah. what people said was, we have a glass of water. There's that much water for everybody. White folks control it. Uh, we want to change things, but we're going to keep all the water. You know, and, and, and in other words, let me help, but I'm not giving up any of the water. Uh, that's unreality. That's fantasy. That's what I'm talking about is mental illness. These same mentally ill people that we're talking about, I don't really care. You know, and I think what the manifesto says, it doesn't really matter anymore. We can't wait for them to be educated. Black people are suffering, and we're going to make a change. Uh, what they have to see is that part of self-determination is to use language that expresses the condition you're in. The American government has no problem with using language of war and revolution, to, uh, of uh, military power to control the political situation in Vietnam. It doesn't mind. The Bible is full of war terms. God is going to strike the enemy dead. Nobody cares until black people start suddenly saying, we will take it no longer, uh, you know, and we're going to have to move to a military struggle if we don't solve this problem. I, you know, I don't think it's a question anymore of winning friends. I think it's a question of white Americans realizing we're either going to straighten this problem out or the colored world is going to do something about it. Now, all colored people that I know would like to avoid that. But how long can you wait? And I, you know, I really don't think it's our, it's our business anymore to separate the language. That's how we feel. No longer are we going to scratch our heads and say we're happy, and, and white man goes on believing it, believing we're happy being a slave. Now, that's the white man's problem. And I think it's his problem, and I think it's for people like yourselves who are leaders who understand this, to help them see that the language we're using is language we've learned from white people. And it's also important to understand, I think, I mean, just the kind of reality that the language of the manifesto describes. You know, the one little thing, one little item is people get upset at a passage in the manifesto that says um, it may be necessary for an armed, black-dominated government to be about the business of educating racism out of America. And folks say, oh my God, communism, fascism, militarism, Marx. but what? The matter of fact has been that it has been necessary to use military force, armed federal troops, to integrate two and three little colored girls into a school in the South, without mentioning the question of revising the curriculum. Clearly, at this stage of the game, if we were tomorrow to attempt the business of a serious anti-racist educational program in America, it would take force of gun. I mean, that's just a statement of yeah. fact. And that, you know, we, we have to, and by we, I mean those who are attempting to address themselves to groups of people. You know, we have to just really stop shilly-shallying and go ahead and tell it like it is, very yeah. bluntly and truthfully. Ma'am, what I'm asking for is truthfully. that you talk about the, the bad, the injustices of today that people do know about, that people, people can identify, but don't be making them feel guilty about well, things well, they have well, no problem know, with. Not, not to get into that point again, if you're going to take that position, then let's throw all history out. If you're not going to use what happened in the past to make clear what's going on oh, today. No, I, don't, I believe in know. history. I believe that America's history is going to have a <laughs> cycle. What are you saying? Let's not use the things from the past then. Because guilt is something different. We're not talking guilt about guilt. Well, guilt. We're talking about responsibility. Guilt. No, no. Yeah. Reparations is responsibility for past injustices which have present form. That's right. Phil, if, if the leadership... I agree with that, but honestly, I believe, well, I believe in that, 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 that the history you has see, to be valid. You misheard the manifesto. That's the problem you have. You misheard it. You got no question of guilt. You thought they were trying to make you guilty. It's not that you're guilty because you're driving around in a car that white folks got from working black folks. It's a fact. <laughs> you don't have to be guilty about it. Just recognize well, um, it. It's very nice that you are conscious about what is courtesy and decent and then going and say something no, like that. Because you, that was kind technique. of a bad thing there. I, play it and I won't even listen to it. But, uh, Phil, don't, it's, guilt, it's, is a, guilt is a terrible thing to have people worrying about. No, I well, think what people have, have to worry about, see, and, and, and you know, let's face it now, we, I mean, we cannot be feeding people pablum. That's right. And what people have to do 
yeah. if people want to be about the business of, of saving this country, is to first of all accept com some kind of intellectual as well as moral responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that means that, like it or not, white churchmen have to be about yeah. the business, even as some black churchmen are about the business, of explaining some things and making some things clear. Yeah. A sociological <clears throat> fact is that any given institution at any period in history is, uh, you know, is a result of a cumulative process. Yes, I agree. And that you, I to describe the, the institution, you have to describe it in its historical context. Now, what that means is that institutions then do, do have, have historical history. responsibilities, and participants in those institutions must be aware of yeah, that if they are to be responsible right. to the institution. Re responsibility for the present situation, which right. has come from the past. But also, present institutions at the given here and moment have people in them. They're not just a, a, an impersonal institution. They have human beings and people with their own experiences. And all I'm asking you is to try to uh, be sensitive to the large, large number of American people whose own experience is not that different. It is, it is different. There's no doubt. But it, yeah, well, I, I feel what, what Mohammed has been saying is that, that they've tried that route. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, and it's failed. And I was, I was glad to hear... Uh, uh, well, I hope it doesn't lead to, the, to poor people that, fighting uh, with one another, because that's a bad thing. Uh, I was glad to see them not back Bible off from the, from the rhetoric, that's right. because what uh, I, what I think I, the rhetoric well, is... I, is, I, is I, I wish, the, I wish there was the, someone else speaking for the Protestant community, too, you know, about the ordinary Protestant... I, I, I was quiet, because I, like the, I thought the Roman Catholics were... Yeah, well, I know. But see, we're talking about people in general. One of the real problems of them is that, unfortunately, it just seems that you continue to insist that there's no... Racist oh, no, Roman no. institution. No, I admit that. I confess. Oh, well, that, I confess that's what we're about. That that's I have racist attitudes in myself and my, the neighborhood where I was raised and the schools that I went to. We know that we have them. Our bishops have put it into a very formal way of saying that we know that we have discrimination in ourselves. Well, yeah. Today, we must seek to try to eliminate this, this sense of discrimination from ourselves. And well, I believe we're no, trying. See, I, I feel we're trying. trying. That's Phil, not necessarily the only route, Monsignor. Some other people can help you eliminate it. Oh, you know, yes. and, and I think black people were prepared to play that role. Well, you can harm us, too, by putting on a, on a false uh, premise. When you talk about some past kind of a guilt that we have no identification with. You, you keep with. saying that. There isn't anything Well, what do you mean no identification guilt? with, Phil? I, I sense the lack of real awareness or acknowledgement that, that Bob, black if you can get up in front of, of a group of immigrant injustice. people and convince them that they are responsible for what happened on the southern plantation when they themselves came out of a famine situation in Ireland, you are a great preacher. What I'm trying to say is that, Phil, white America, would you agree with this? White America is responsible for the terrible injustices done to the black man in America, right? Okay. Now, people in power in white America today, among whom are leading Roman Catholic Church, Protestant churches, and Jewish synagogues, we have it within our... Responsibility. All right. We have the power and the money, if we really in our gut believe that this injustice was terrible, yeah. to reorder our priorities, yes. to demand that the people that sit on our boards of trustees and that we send to Congress reorder the nation's priorities. But in fact, right. Foreman, who's given us the chance to do this, we are saying no to him. Now, it seems to me Bob, that is you denying. Want, you made a jump from what you've said about we have this, uh, uh, this obligation and priorities to do all these things. But right. uh, what I think Mr. Foreman has said was everything is in terms of money. That is, it's money to provide for self-determination. That is too narrow an issue. Well, I mean, it is the money. Let's we start with the money. Put people, before we, put people before we defend, the line. Before, where did you see that in the manifesto, that it's primarily money? Because they ask for money, it's primarily money. You conclude that. I'm not just talking about just what is written there, because oh. the thing is large. What you're reading what is in written. is what you're talking about. But even, no, even talking about if what it people is. hear from it. But yeah, that's what people hear because they want to hear. And if it's just money, that let us have a little bit of that for a change. Yeah. Since you know we haven't had any of that, we didn't even get paid. And let's talk yeah. about yeah, one, of your, one, of your, one of your Irish right. immigrants whose now name they is, is Kennedy. Money from America? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah, but you see, the, I think the other thing right. is this: that people in general, you talk about specifics. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. But you see, all along, all along, we have been told that you know we love you. All along, we have been told that you are our brother, and we care about you. And so, obviously, we've got all your love, but, Father, not, but we don't yeah. have money. Father and Washington, one of the if, if I, I could say that every, every Roman Catholic I know would say to you, you're my brother, I'd feel very happy right now, because uh, not everybody would be able to say that. Yeah, well, but uh, uh, at least as far as our documents and as far as our pronouncements are concerned, uh, we, we love you and, and you are our brother. But this has been, but there's you know, a big what difference the case has been. Documents and, and people's actual life. But you know, Phil, mm -hmm. it seems to me that if, if we accept, as you are willing to, yeah. the basic premise that white America has benefited from the history of institutional arrangements that relegated black people to a particular position and enriched the country and those of us who are white, and we accept our responsibility yeah. to do something to repair that damage yeah, agree, yeah. and to get over it, then it seems to me that that is a, a great moral problem for us all. And one of the things that concerns me 
about what you've been saying and about what so many people in the churches have been saying uh, for so long a time is that we seem to have a greater sensitivity for the uh, uh, conscience and feelings of uh, the white people in Catholic and Protestant and Jewish communities who aren't ready to accept their responsibility yet, and we must be easy with them, we have a greater sensitivity yeah, to no, their problems than we do to the problem. You're accusing me of, of a very horrible thing to do, which I hope I don't do in my life. Well, I'm not only accusing that you of that. That is trying to soften people's consciences. My whole business is to be about trying to get people to accept the right, the, the right conscience. And that is why I say it's so important for anyone who dares to uh, presume to do that with other human beings should attempt to understand the other hum human beings where they are and to try to say the thing in the way that will draw out of them their, the goodness that is in them. Because I don't believe that all white people are bad. I believe that there's goodness in white people. And that we have to draw from that goodness. And I believe we can do it on the basis of what we stand for. And you're willing to say then to all the black people in the country, we're sorry, but you must remain in your present condition until we have convinced enough Not white people. Not at all. Let me ask Not a all. particular question, Monsignor, that we've just gone through out in South Bend, a fine Catholic organization. I had a good time at the University of Notre Dame at the Episcopal Convention. And while we were out there, we, we wrestled with the whole problem, not just of the, the money that we eventually gave through a pipeline to Betsy, the Black Economic Development Conference, but the recognition of Betsy as a group. Yeah. And uh, this is something we argued about here today a little bit. And I, I'm just curious, not to put you on the spot, right. but since uh, uh, you know, we've been going this way with yeah. you, what, uh, what do you think it would require of uh, your church, or your archdiocese at least, to say, yeah, Betsy is a, a group that represents the blacks at this time in history, a coalition of the black liberation movement or the human liberation movement. Uh, what would it take for uh, your church to say, yes, that's yeah. recognize the group? Well, I really well, cannot a, speak for my church, but I that. believe that from the work no? that I do, Why did they say is no? that I think we are at a level even more primary than that, and that is to try to draw from our people their, se their sense of responsibility for where we are now, and to try to see that this is a common cause that we have with other people who have undergone the same type of experience, and that we must not just be self-interested to be concerned only about our own uh, efforts towards self-determination, which we are doing, but also to see others in the same situation and join with them on that basis, that it is a common cause, a, a common effort, a common suffering, a common uh, situation. But I, uh, the, because of that, I feel very uh, harmed when the case is presented so that it turns our people off. Yeah, but why don't you answer the guilty. question instead uh, of going back into your sermon? Because why don't you I answer did. the question? I did he answer you, the question. Why didn't your church say, why did, what would it take for it to say yes? And I'm asking you, why did why they did say no? Say because no. that's somewhere down the line. This thing is, uh, is prior <laughs> okay. to that. Okay, Father, you're not going to deal with anything. But this is a tough no. question for the white I, church. I answered as honest as I could. You cannot talk about Your church is racist. That's the answer, just like mine. That's the answer. <clears throat> well, you know, you know, it's impressive to me the number of uh, black leaders, uh, I gather, who have come out and have said uh, uh, Betsy is the organization you ought sure. to give the money to. Now, let's, I, I, I think people would be interested to know that. Abernathy has said that. Whitney Young has said that. Who are the other people? In other words, a, a black legitimization of that organization. Well, just, all you know, the black simply, caucuses. Yeah, all the black caucuses. All the black caucuses, the major denominations, you know, Jesse Jackson, um, Coretta King, uh, Ralph Abernathy of SCLC, Whitney Young, and the leader of the Urban League here in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, the Citywide Black Community Council. As a matter of fact, Woody Woodland, who at one point worked for the Archdiocese Human Relations Program, is one of the most active, you know, campaigners for the program. Uh, you know, what's very, very clear is that th there's no problem in the black community, no significant problem with the recognition of the legitimacy of Betsy. One thing, too, that we might add is that in terms of those organizations, in terms of those organizations that encompass poor whites, there's been no problem with Betsy. A couple of things that, you know, people, a couple of things that people often overlook uh, are, well, number one, the whole demand of the Black Economic Development Conference for monies to assist welfare rights organization. And the bulk of people on welfare in this country are white. Right. Our effort in this field is certainly going to benefit poor right, whites right. more than poor blacks. You know, we figure that's necessary. We have to be big enough to accept that kind of responsibility. We have said, you know, we have said to the Presbyterians, for instance, that they must release lands in the Southwest to La Raza, to the Chicano people, who are, by the way, you know, uh, Catholic people of color, you know. They have had no problem. Catholic people, Spanish-speaking Catholic people of color, have had no problem understanding and recognizing the legitimacy of the Black Economic Development Conference in the manifesto. That the problem does come, that the problem does come, I, I honestly feel, with those leaders in the church who have become more political than religious in their leadership, and with those uh, 
segments in the church who have been denied the truth for so long. Phil, I sit where you do. My denomination said no to Betsy, and it's very hard, but I, I just feel that my no, leaders we were, were wrong. Say yes or no, we said no? Said no. You said no. Said there was no such uh, thing as Betsy. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, that's what I say. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say, honestly, that it's a, it's a question which is down the line from the more primary well, if, one. You know, you keep arguing when it's convenient that the church is made up of these poor people, these poor immigrant racists, and, uh, and, and then when, when, we, when we talk about a decision, then suddenly it's, it's the poverty, it's the hierarchy. That's a very flip-flop argument. Not you know? at all, and, because uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't maybe know maybe I'm not such a good teacher, but I thought I had a little bit of a logic what I was saying, that you must be able to, if you work with a, a group, that depends upon the, the people being with you, you have to try to address the people uh, to see, have them support that's you. But the church, amazing, I mean, for a church you know, that that's a very interesting right, thing, because the, the church, I mean, the, the Christian church, I'm about what and I the nature of the, the Christian church is all church. about, yeah, what, what you think is about, what I, well, the nature, I know is about. Well, the nature of the church has a lot to do with, first of all, the kind of isolated witness of Christ. I mean, you know, Jesus Christ was not a mass leader. He couldn't get as many people, you know, as many disciples as we got to occupy Cookman Methodist Church. Dig yeah. it, that's real. Yeah. The church indeed was forged largely by its experience in the catacombs. But after I mean, a couple of years, he did get a few more disciples. Uh, after a couple of years, he did get a few more right, disciples. Right, but what I'm saying is this. By what talking what he wanted to say. Senior, that the Christian witness see, has see, never been a witness. Just die then. He's still around now. The Christian still witness now. has never been, has never been, uh, at least to my understanding, you know, has never been a witness that finds its justification on a demographic basis. That indeed the justification of the crit Christian witness yeah. has to do with, you know, man's commitment to man and man's commitment to the higher values. Yeah. And if well, you are to be alone, if you are to be alone, we'll have witnesses. If you are to be alone with the truth, you know, that it's best to be alone with the truth than to be, you know, uh, to be pandering to... Um, to an unfortunately misinformed right. democracy. Still, we not have the that, money. Not only that. Well, and you know, this, part, this is where, it, where your argument. This is where your argument really. You know, I think you ought to re listen to it yourself. I'm listening. A to church that ex excommunicates people for not holding positions. A church that has as much authority over its people, probably more authority than any other single church. You're going to say you have no control over your people. The the the, the Quakers uh, back in the 18th century excommunicated Quakers who had a pro-slavery position. Uh, and, you know, it seems to me all we're saying is that the church take a position. Our church has taken a position, and we're going to see how much authority the church has, presume that the, the general convention is being questioned, which is, you know, the major uh, litigating body in our church. Well, we're prepared for that fight, you know, and I think that's... Yeah, well, I mean, I really yeah. Yeah. Which means, therefore, that uh, where our responsibility is concerned, we cannot wait to ask all of the people, yeah. are you with us? Yeah. Uh, you have to recognize what the responsibility is and assume it. Yeah, I, I, would be, I, I would think that if a Catholic cardinal endorsed Betsy publicly, mm -hmm. that it would have tremendous That's effect. Right. Right on. Uh, not mm -hmm. because, you know, your people would just fall into line, but your people would say, hey, wait a minute, I'd, I'd better really look yeah. into this. Yeah. It can't be just what I thought. It can't be, uh, you know, somebody holding me up. Mm -hmm. and taking money away. It me, there's something behind Let's not this. just get after yeah, maybe, the Catholics maybe, because yeah, they... Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he's, no, well, he's so eloquent about, about people this. That I want to uh, focus on. I, yeah. Well, but I think we need to recognize because that, for uh, example, as, the as uh, Mr. Kinsel said in the beginning, though, as, as Bob you try to have a form, <laughs> a real form of, of, of an issue. And that is, that is why I tried to bring out the things I tried to bring out, because I believe that what happened in the last segment was not the full impact of this issue in the Philadelphia community today. I try to try to put into words what I feel people generally are feeling about this thing, and I try to bring it out as part of what of what is actually here. Now I we're talking about the way it is, how things are, the here and now, and how, however I you think, put it. Not I just theory you ideas. Out, you know, the, the point that you brought out, I thought it was a very good point. I was kind of bothered that you didn't quite make it clear enough because I think that you know it's probably safe to say that the reaction in the black community to the manifesto has been one of, of you know, an increasingly positive reaction, yeah. that the reaction in the black community has certainly been, I mean, in the white community, has certainly been, not has been right. as positive, in fact, might be negative. Well, you know, recently, recently, that's true. In I mean, fact, you know, might be negative. But I'm talking about, <laughs> what I'm, what I'm very, saying might be overwhelmingly negative. Yeah. That is, I mean, yeah. you know, a poll might show, uh, yeah. God knows, 85% of, of white folks on the street feel like yeah. this is some kind of That's damage. part of the situation, now, isn't the thing it? That, you know, that, you know, I mean, that is indicative That's of the me. problem and the urgency. Right. Not too yeah. long ago, the Gallup folks did a thing around police brutality. And they found out that all except 4% of the black people interviewed, you know, felt that police brutality against minority people was a common occurrence. Less than 40% of, of the white people interviewed saw that. And what happens is you have, you know, this increasing right. gap. Right. And baby, the thing that we have to do is not, you know, wait 
for some miracle to change that gap, but we have to be in there, you know, by we, I mean now people who, particularly people who address, you know, white congregations have to be in there educating and working to reverse yeah. that trend. Yeah. And that's why he heard you saying, what I heard you saying, and what I'm going to speak to now, this is the crucial point. I remember once in a speech, long story short, this woman said, what I don't like about what you're saying and the position you take is you scare me. And I asked her, you know, to go on into why I scared her. And she said, well, it, what it boiled down to is a lot of apprehensions about what we might do. Yeah. I said, lady, let me tell you, we're terrified of you, not because of what you might do, but you know, what you've done. been doing, you know, yeah. for 400 years. Yeah. And, you know, and what I, hear, what, what, I hear, what I think he was trying to say, he was hearing what I was hearing was, and, uh, and when a lot of people hear the same thing, maybe you better check up on what you're saying. When a lot of people hear the same thing, and that is that you're saying, let's, we got to deal with white people, you know, and, and until white people are together, we can't really deal with this very real problem of black no. people. What black people are saying is, later, we don't have time for you to wait anymore. We're going to take over the control of our own lives one yeah. way or the other. Now, well, you may be hearing what you, you want to hear too, Father those Lord, of you because who, that's something that, that, that you those like to do. You put things in terms of the to shape policy. I think this is the challenge of the manifesto. You have to begin to address the urgency. <laughs> yeah. But of don't this you priority. believe that, that Catholic people are making efforts today in their schools to address this problem? No. You don't believe no. that? No, no white don't organizations believe... are. The you government, don't... the churches, my church isn't. No. And, no. But, you, know, you don't no, believe we, that there, we, are, that there are Catholic sisters who, who believe in this and who are trying to say it and try to bring their children up this way? You don't believe that? No, because we don't have time. But let me just point out that this, this thing has been addressed to the, the, the white Christian churches and the synagogues. And in whether it's in Christian tradition or the Judaic uh, tradition, we have always had the prophets who have stood up and said, Thus saith the Lord. Yes. And even though I, I can understand the, the amount of resistance and the negativism might, which might be among Catholics, and I don't know whether to say generally or not, but I will say generally. I still I think that few, it is uh, the responsibility. Ordinary Presbyterian pastors from okay. somewhere in yeah. there talking yeah. also. And, 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 yes, and, and I certainly shouldn't uh, limit this to, to no, Catholics, but I would say in, in the white Christian churches as well. I still think that there, it is the responsibility of those who follow in the tradition of the prophets to say that this is a just demand, a just confrontation which has come to us and that the lady should stand up and make that yes. very clear and hope to God and pray and work. Well, I think that others will follow. Well, not just because it's just, yeah. but because of the, of the potential leadership and therapy in it. That's what I was getting at before. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, you know, like, for instance, I was at a loss last, all last year, you know, a, a lot of criticisms in my talks around the last were that I confused people. One of the areas where I confused them was when they said, what can we do? I didn't have a legitimate thing to say you could do. Now we have. The reason I didn't was because black people hadn't, as a people, yet said what was legitimate. Now here we find an expression of legitimacy. Now if I speak around the diocese this year and people say, what can we do? I say, support the manifesto. There it is, a clear self act of self-determination by black people. But is it clear, yeah. Father Woodward? Is it clear to the people who will hear you when you go around talking like that? Well, I'm trying to say to that it's you? not clear. Is it clear to you, Phil? That's the question. It's clear to me if it's put in the terms as it was brought up by different people here. Well, that's that important. in the present situation, yes, we all have this tremendous moral responsibility to react to the terrible situation we live in. I'm just saying that I know my people enough to say, if you put it into the context of the past, they will not hear that. Well, listen, they don't feel you know, guilt for right, what happened Phil. in the past. You, you see, I think that you understand why it's put into the context of the past, as well as the present, and so that you understand that. I don't know if we're not dealing with, with a moot question. You see, you know, now after you get to understand it, I would assume that you're able to interpret this to your people so that they will understand yeah, it. That that, that I, becomes yeah. your real responsibility, not only simply to interpret it to them verbally, yeah. but to begin to act it out yourself so that within the hierarchy of the yeah. structure you find yourself in, but you, not only you, but Presbyterians, Episcopalians, right. and so forth, Methodists, begin to work within the structure they find themselves that, into. That, that is to, precisely to begin what my whole effort is. The uh, leadership, uh, and, you know, so that it would lead me to the question then, you know, aside from how we're going to relate it to the, the poor guy in the church who sits at the back and just can't see where he's guilty. Yeah. But since we all understand that, that there is guilt, that there is responsibility, yeah. moreover, since we all understand that, what can or what will the church do, what will you do mm -hmm. collectively mm -hmm. within your churches to see that the demand for reparations mm -hmm. is made real, is fulfilled? What will you do specifically where, where you are? No, aside from just sitting in, you know, in a, in a kind of discussion with people. Yeah, who I know this, this discussion is no. a long one. Well, let, let me tell you very it. directly, <clears throat> I will not, absolutely not, connect reparations with the rhetoric of the Black Manifesto. 
and I cannot, as a Christian pastor, say to people that, well, don't be upset by the words. Don't be bothered by what it says. We don't have to take it seriously. After all, we've sinned in the same way, therefore, we shouldn't worry <coughs> about their sins. Now, I agree with you. You, you have plenty of you. reason. You have plenty of reason to say that there's black people should you, be afraid of white. You, in other words, you, you don't want to tell your people to do something that you don't believe to be right, right? Do you pay taxes? Do you support the Vietnamese, the American government's position in Vietnam? Or do you tell your people not to pay taxes and support that slaughter? I do. You know, because yeah. I don't, I don't agree with it. And you know, I mean, you can be, be, be consistent with that yeah. very strong well, position. Can I you know? mention that the, the cardinal like was brought up the, the sense of priorities that he did uh, publicly recently? I just wanted to mention that uh, talk about this question of uh, where our priorities are in America, yeah. Yeah. precisely about Vietnam. Cardinal, the, the cardinal. cardinal of Philadelphia, our cardinal of our. Yeah. Well, you know. evidently, Betsy, you slip. We should have been to the Roman Catholic Church because we don't have an answer from them yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's one thing I want to say. Frank, 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 we'll Frank, 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 I think you would say when you do that, Holy think about Roman contain. Catholic mentality and how they think. I think you would say that Holy Scriptures contain that which is necessary for us to, to gain salvation. And yet, if you were to accept every approach of the people of Israel and others towards salvation, then you would have to throw out the whole Bible. And certainly there is rhetoric there, and uh, I think you could have hang-ups about some of the things, and I can understand it, because you are not in the same position as we. But in the yes. Holy Bible itself, there's also rhetoric, which I don't think you could go along with. And yet, the Bible can lead us to salvation, and this black manifesto, as far as we are concerned, can mean salvation for us. Oh, I think it can. Uh, but I think, the, sal I think the salvation, but the salvation may not come by taking just the manifesto and going out and saying, that's it. You, I think no, you're right. You can't take us. the Bible, you see. You always want to teach say, us what we should know. You know, white folks always want to tell you, know, th that's not enough. You're not asking for enough money. You're not, you know, your wording isn't right. Look, we know what we're doing. And, you know, if you think that's, okay. the, if you think that's the only thing we're going to do, then I'm sorry you have such a shallow opinion of us. What I'm questioning and what you were saying is, and I've heard this so many times, you know, I'm such a moral person. I have such a strong position against violence. Well, let's show it toward Vietnamese people then if we have a strong position against violence. Why is it only, you know, toward our home front toward black people here. You know, Dr. King calls it split-level morality. We have a lot of split-level morality, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm opposed to it, too, and, I, and I'm glad to hear you say that. Uh, I, I hate to see violence come, but I'm not a pacifist. And I, in addition to that, you've got to recognize that, that just because $5 billion, $3 billion, that will not eradicate the evils in this society, that you don't begin there. That, you know, we're not even talking about whether or not this package is going to take care of all the problems. No. It's not going to, it's not going to, it's going to do away with your guilt. You're still going to owe, but you got to start. And you want to begin starting with some extraneous kinds of things about what you're not going to do. The right. question is posed as what are you going to do in a positive sense, you know, not... But what you're going to do, it makes a difference how you do it as well as what you do. Frank, what I you're saying is that because I agree that I should do something, that anything that's put in front of me is what I ought no, to do. No, I, what we're saying is, I remember hearing a, 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 a Quaker leader say once, we can give you money, but not for use, not for violence. I said, well, you're not giving us anything. You're bribing us. You know, when you give somebody something, they do with it as they choose.